Hello students and welcome to March and to the start of our next and final nine weeks. I'm excited to share this time with you. And one way that thing that we're going to do to kind of kick off March um, and, to, uh, and to celebrate is we're going to do a March Madness Poetry Unit. Um, so I'm gonna ask you guys to go ahead and get ready for me by pulling up the PowerPoint that is in your, um, in Teams today. It's gonna look a little something like this. Put myself up here. And then I want for you to go ahead and scan this QR code or follow the link um, that I have posted um, that you are going to vote on each poem as we encounter that poem together. Um, so go ahead and get that form pulled up. Uh, that form for you is gonna look like this. It's gonna have each individual matchup that you're gonna vote your favorite on. Um, so, and to based on your favorite is that's how we're gonna go to the next lot, next round. So um, go ahead and bring that up or again, follow the link, get that ready to go. And then how we're gonna do is we're gonna look at poems. Um, sometimes I'm gonna read them. Sometimes I'm gonna give you some time to read them, um, but I, we're gonna look at different poems and then we're going to vote on between the two of them, which are our favorites. So our first matchup, Jazz Fantasia by Carl Sandburg versus Listening by Amy Lowell. Let's take a look at Jazz Fantasia. Drum on your drums, batter on your banjos, sob on long, cool, winding saxophones. Go to it, oh Jasmine. Sling your knuckles on the bottoms of the happy type tin pans. Let your trombones ooze and go hush -a hush -a with the slippery sandpaper. Moan like an autumn wind in the lonesome treetops. Moan soft like you wanted somebody terrible. Cry like a racing car slipping away from a motorcycle cop. Bang, bang. You, Jasmine. Bang together drums, traps, banjos, horns, tin cans. Make two people fight on top of a stairway and scratch each other's eyes in a slinch tumbling down the stairs. Can the rough stuff. Now a Mississippi steamboat pushes up the night river with a hoo, hoo, hoo and the green lanterns calling to the high soft stars. A red moon rides on the humps of the low river hills. Go to it, oh Jasmine. All right, and then that's Versus Listening by Amy Lowell. Tis you that are the music, not your song. The song is but a door which opening wide lets forth the pent up melody inside. Your spirit's harmony, which clear and strong sing but of you. Throughout your whole life long, your songs, your thoughts, your doings, each divide this perfect beauty, waves within a tide, or single notes amid a glorious throng. The song of earth has many different chords. Ocean has many moods and many tones, yet always ocean. In the damp spring woods, the painted trillium smiles, white, crisp pine cones, autumn alone can ripen. So is this one music with a thousand cadences. All right, so take a second on your own to read these independently. So give yourself a few minutes to take a second just to read. If you need to press pause on this video to give yourself some time to do so. And then after you've really had a chance to now listen to the poem and then read the poem, I want for you to go ahead and vote on which one is your favorite. So let's take a pause on the video and then to read and then to come back and vote and then come back to the next slide with me. It's time to vote guys. All right, we have our next poem um, pair matchup and that's Sympathy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar and Hope is the Thing with Feathers by Emily Dickinson. So I want for you to start out this time by reading before I read. So go ahead and press pause on this video. And I want for you to take a moment to read these two poems all by yourself and then come back for um, the oral recitation of them. Sympathy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. I know what the cage bird feels, alas, when the sun is bright on the upland slopes, when the wind stirs soft through the springing grass, and the river flows like a stream of glass. 
when the first bird sings and the first bud opes and the faint perfume from its chalice steals, I know what the cage bird feels. I know why the cage bird beats its wing till its blood is red on the cruel bars, for he must fly back to his perch and cling when the fain would be on the bow a spring. And the pain still throbs in the old, old scars, and they pulse again with a keener sting. I know why he beats his wing. I know why the cage bird sings, ah me, when his wing is bruised and his bosom sore, when he beats his bars and he would be free, and is not a carol of joy or glee, but a prayer that he sends up from his heart's deep core, but a plea that upward to heaven he flings. I know why the cage bird sings. Now, Hope is the Thing with Feathers by Emily Dickinson. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest, and sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity, it asked a crumb of me. All right, so take a look at those two poems and then we're gonna go ahead back to that form and you're gonna vote. We've got our next matchup, matchup number three. Uh, the first poem is Home by Rupert Brooke and then Ghost in the Land of Skeletons by Christopher Kennedy. I want for you to take a moment to pause and then I want for you to independently read. And then when you come back, I'm going to read the two poems. Home by Rupert Brooke. I came back late and tired last night into my little room to the long chair and the firelight and comfortable gloom. But as I entered softly in, I saw a woman there, the line of neck and cheek and chin, the darkness of her hair, the form of one I did not know sitting in my chair. I stood a moment fierce and still watching her neck and hair. I made a step to her and saw that there was no one there. It was some trick of the firelight that made me see her there. It was a chance of shade and light and the cushion in the chair. Oh, all you happy over the earth that night, how could I sleep? I lay and watched the lonely gloom and watched the moonlight creep from wall to basin match up the room. All night I could not sleep. Ghost in the Land of Skeletons by Christopher Kennedy. If not for flesh's pretty paint, we're just a bunch of skeletons working hard to deny the fact of bones. Teeth remind me that we die. That's why I never smile except when looking at a picture of a ghost captured by a camera lens and a book about the paranormal. When someone takes a spirit, picture of a spirit, it gives me hope. I admire the ones who refuse to go away, lovers scorned and criminals burned. I love the dead little girl who plays in her yard, a spectral matchup of hide and seek. It's the fact that they don't know they're dead that appeals to me most. Like a man once said to me, do you ever feel like you're a ghost? Sure, I answered every day. He laughed at that and disappeared. All I could think was that he beat me to it. All right, go ahead. Let's take a second to vote. Can't wait to see what you thought between those two poems. All right, we've got matchup number four. The, the moon was but a chin of gold a night or two ago, and now she turns her perfect face upon the world below. Her forehead is of ampless blonde, her cheek like barrel stone, her eye until the summer dew, the likest I have known. Her lips of amber never part, but what must be the smile upon her friend she would bestow were it such her silver, silver will. And what a privilege to be, but the remotest star, for certainly her way might pass beside your twinkling door. Her bonnet is in the firmament, her universe, her shoe, the stars and twinket, twink, trinkets at her belt, her dimities of blue. All right, and that one's versus the moon by Robert Louis Stevenson. The moon has a face like a clock in the hall. She shines on thieves on the garden wall, 
on streets and fields and harbor quays and birdies asleep in the forks of the trees. The squalling cat and the squeaking mouse, the howling dog by the door of the house, the bat that lies in the bed at noon, all love to be out by the light of the moon. But all of the things that belong to the day cuddle to sleep to be out of her way and flowers and children close their eyes till up in the morning, the sun shall arise. All right, I want you to take a pause on this video and read these to yourself. And then I want for you to go and vote after you're done. Come back to me when you're finished. All right, we've got our next matchup, Fifth Grade Autobiography by Rita Dove versus Nikki Rosa by Nikki Giovanna, Nikki Giovanni, sorry. Fifth Grade into bio, Autobiography. I was four in this photograph fishing with my grandparents at a lake in Michigan. My brother squats in poison ivy. His Davy Crockett cap sits squared on his head so the raccoon tail flounces down the back of his sailor suit. My grandfather sits to the far right in a folding chair, and I know his left hand is on the tobacco in his pants pocket because I used to wrap it for him every Christmas. Grandmother's hips bulge from the brush. She's leaning into the ice chest, sun through the trees, printing her dress with soft, luminous paws. I am staring jealously at my brother. The day before he rode his first horse alone, I was strapped in a basket behind my grandfather. He smelled of lemons. He's died, but I remember his hands. All right, let's take a look at Nikki Rosa. Childhood remembrances are always a drag if you're black. You always remember things like living in Woodlawn with no inside toilet. And if you become famous or something, they never talk about how happy you were to have your mother all to yourself and how good the water felt when you got your bath from one of those big tubs that folk in Chicago barbecue in. And somehow when you talk about home, it never gets across how much you understood their feelings as the whole family attended in meetings about Hollydale. And even though you remember, your biographers never understand your father's pain as he sells a stock and another dream goes. And though you're poor, it isn't poverty that concerns you. And though they fought a lot, it isn't your father's drinking that makes any difference. But only that everybody is together and you and your sisters have happy birthdays and very good Christmases. And I really hope no white person ever has cause to write about me because they never understand black love is black wealth. And they'll probably talk about my hard childhood and never understand that all the while I was quite happy. All right, take a second to read those by yourself, press pause, and then you got it. Go ahead and go vote. Come back to me when you're done. All right, we've got matchup number six. We're gonna start this with you guys are gonna read these to yourself. So go ahead and press pause and read them quietly to yourself. And then I'm gonna read them for you. Sea Fever by John Maserfield. I must go down to the seas again to look at the lonely sea and sky. And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And while the wheels kick and the wind song and the white sail shaking and a gray mist on the sea's face and a gray dawn breaking, I must go down to the seas again for the call of the running tide is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied. And all I ask is a windy day with the cl white clouds flying and the flung spray and the brown splume and the seagulls crying. I must go down to the seas again to the vagrant gypsy life to the gull's way and the whale's way where the wind is like a wedded knife. And all I ask is a merry yawn from a fa laughing fellow rover and quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick's over. Crossing the Bar by Lord, Lord Alfred Tennyson. Sunset and evening star and one clear call for me. And may there be no moaning of the bar when I put out to sea. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and foam, when that which drew out the boundless deep turns again home. Twilight and evening bell, and after that the dark, and may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our born of time and place, the flood may bear me far, I hope to, to see what my pilot face to face 
when I have crossed the bar. All right, let's, let's match those up. Which one is the winner? Go ahead and go and vote. All right, for this one, I want us to try something a little different. I want for you to read these out loud. So I want you to press pause. And then I want for you to read out loud, We Real Cool by Gwendolyn Brooks um, and Nothing Gold Can Stay by Robert Frost. Now, these are two of my favorite poems and I'm really curious as to which one is going to win. Um, so go ahead and press pause and I want for you to read these two poems out loud. And then I want for you to go and vote and come back to me when you're done. All right, we've got two new poems to look at, ex-basketball player and Harlem. So let's go. Um, let's start out with you taking a pause and reading these to yourself. You can either read it out loud or you can read it quietly to yourself. Come back to me when you're finished. Ex-basketball player by John Updike. Pearl Avenue runs past the high school lot, bends with the trolley tracks and stops cut off before it has a chance to go two blocks at Colonel McComsky Plaza. Berth's garage is on the corner facing west and there most days you'll find Flick Webb who helps Berth out. Flick stands tall among the idiot pumps, five on a side, the old bubble head style, their rubber elbows hanging loose and low. One's nostrils are two S's and his eyes, an E and an O, and one is squat without a head at all, more of a football type. Once Flick played for the high school team, the Wizards. He was good, in fact, the best. In 46, he bucketed 390 points, a county record steal. The ball loved Flick. I saw him rack up 38 or 40 in one home game. His hands were like wild birds. He never learned to trade. He just sells gas, checks oils, and changes flats. Once in a while, as a gag, he dribbles an inner tube, but most of us remember anyway. His hands are fine and nervous on the lug wrench. It makes no difference to the lug wrench though. Off work, he hangs out around May's luncheonette. Grease gray and kind of coiled, he plays pinball, smokes those thin cigars, nurses lemon phosphates. Flick seldom says a word to May, just nods beyond her face toward bright applauding tears of Nico wafers, nibs, and juju beads. Harlem by Langston Hughes. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does it explode? All right, let's go ahead and vote between those two. Which one is your favorite? All right, we've got two poems for a matchup number nine. I want for you to take a moment and read these out loud to yourself. So go ahead and read them out loud. The Boy at the Window by Richard Wilbur and Snowman by Gu Sheng. And take a moment to, after you get done reading them, to choose between the two and go ahead and vote. Uh, go ahead and press pause on this video and then come back to me when you're done. All right, we've got two poems for a matchup number 10, same song by Pat Mora and Mirror by Sylvia Plath. All right, I want for you to read same song. So take a second, read same song to yourself, read it out loud so that you can hear it because poetry is meant to be read aloud. And then after you get done reading that, I'm gonna read Mirror by Sylvia Plath for you. Mirror by Sylvia Plath. I am silver and exact. I have no preconceptions. Whatever I see, I swallow immediately just as it is. Unmisted by love or dislike, I am not cruel, only truthful. The eye of a little god four cornered. Most of the time I meditate on the opposite wall. It is pink with speckles. I have looked at it for so long, I think it is part of my heart, but it flickers. Faces and darkness separate us over and over. Now I am a lake. A woman bends over me, searching my reaches for what she really is. Then she turns to those liars, the candles, or the moon. I see her back and reflect it faithfully. 
She rewards me with tears and an agitation of hands. I am important to her. She comes and goes. Each morning it is her face that replaces the darkness. In me, she has drowned a young girl, and in me an old woman rises toward her day after day like a terrible fish. All right, so take a moment to think about these two poems and then you got it. I want you to go ahead and go and vote. All right, we have two poems. I'm offering this poem by Jimmy Santiago Baca and Things by Eloise Greenfield. So the first thing I want for you to do is to press pause. And then I want for you to read both of these poems out loud and then come back to me when you're done. All right, welcome back. I'm now gonna read them. So I want for you to kind of listen. You've heard yourself read, you read it out loud, but now I want you to listen to it being read. I am offering this poem to you since I have nothing else to give. Keep it like a warm coat when winter comes to cover you or like a pair of thick socks the cold cannot bite through. I love you. I I have nothing else to give you, so to the pot full of yellow corn to warm your belly in winter, it is a scarf for your hair to wear over your hair or to tie up around your face. I love you. Keep it. Treasure this as you would if you were lost, needing direction in the wilderness life becomes when mature. And in the corner of your drawer, tucked away like a cabin or hogan in dense trees, come knocking, and I will answer, give you directions, and let you warm yourself by this fire, rest by this fire, and make you feel safe. I love you. It's all I have to give, and all anyone needs to live, and to go on living inside when the world outside no longer cares if you live or die. Remember, I love you. And that one's paired up with Things by Eloise Greenfield. Went to the corner, walked in the store, bought me some candy, ain't got it no more, ain't got it no more. Went to the beach, played on the shore, built me a sand house, ain't got it no more, ain't got it no more. Went to the kitchen, laid down on the floor, made me a poem, still got it, still got it. All right, let's take a second and let's vote. Which one of those wonder is gonna win? All right, the summer I was 16 versus because it looked hotter that way. I want for you to read these. So take a second and read them. And then at the end, I want for you to vote. So go ahead and press pause so that you have a second to read them and then come back and vote. All right, we've got matchup number 13 two different poems here. I'm going to read them out loud. I want for you to listen. And then at the end, I want for you to vote. Introduction to Poetry by Billy Collins. I asked them to take a poem and hold it up to the light like a color slide or press an ear against its hive. I say drop a mouse into the poem and watch him probe his way out or walk inside the poem's room and fill the walls for a light switch. I want them to water ski across the surface of a poem, waving at the author's name on the shore. But all they wanna do is tie the poem to a chair with rope and torture a confession out of it. They begin beating it with a hose to find out what it really means, all right? How to eat a poem by Eve Merriam. Don't be polite, bite in. Pick it up with your fingers and lick the juice that may run down your chin. It's ready and ripe now, whether you, whenever you are. You do not need a knife or a fork or a spoon or a plate or a napkin or a tablecloth, for there is no core or stem or rind or pit or seed or skin to throw away. All right, let's go ahead and vote between those two. Which one's it gonna be? All right, we're in matchup 14, Mother to Son by Langston Hughes and Woman by Alice Walker. I want for you to take a moment to read these poems to yourself. I do encourage you to read them out loud. And then I want for you to vote. So go ahead and press pause for reading. And then when you've come back to me, go ahead and vote. All right, match up 15. When You Are Old by William Butler Yeats and at the end by Ed Meek. 
When you are old and gray and full of sleep and nodding by the fire, take down this book and slowly read and dream of the soft look your eyes once had and of their shadows deep. How many loved your moments of glad grace and loved your beauty with false, with love false or true? But one man loved the pilgrim soul in you and loved the sorrows of your changing face and bending down beside the glowing bars murmur a little sadly how love fled and paced upon the mountains overhead and hid his face among a crowd of stars. At the end, he was so old and his bones seemed to swim in his skin. And when I took his hand to feel his pulse, I felt myself drawn in. It was as faint as the steps of a child padding across the floor in slippers, and yet he was smiling. I could almost hear a river running beneath his breath, the water clear and cold and deep. He was ready and willing to wade on in. All right, take a second and go ahead and vote. All right, match up. We've got two poems. One is called America. The other is called I Too. I want for you to take a second to read these to yourself. And then I want for you to vote for which one is your favorite between America and I Too. So go ahead and press pause on this video and then read them. And then you know what to do next. So go ahead and vote. All right, we're matchup 17, The Secret Heart by Robert Coffin and Those Winter Sundays by Robert Hayden. All right, I want for you to read The Secret Heart by Robert Coffin out loud to yourself, press pause on this video, and then come back and listen to Those Winter Sundays by Robert Hayden. Sundays too, my father got up early and put his clothes on in the blue black cold then with cracked hands that ached from labor in the weekday weather made baked fires blaze. No one ever thanked him. I'd wake and hear the cold splintering, breaking. When the rooms were warm, he'd call. And slowly I would rise and dress, fearing the chronic angers of that house, speaking indifferently to him who had driven out the cold and polished my good shoes as well. What did I know? What did I know of love's austere? and lonely offices. All right, so take a second between those two poems, which one do you like better? And go ahead and vote. All right, we've got two, My Papa's Waltz and Listening to Grown Ups Quarreling by Ruth Whitman. And I want you to hear, I want you this time, I want you to close your eyes and listen as I read the poems. My Papa's Waltz. The whiskey on your breath can make a small boy dizzy, but I hung on like death. Such waltzing was not easy. We romped until the pan slid from the kitchen shelf. My mother's countenance could not unfrown itself. The hand that held my wrist was battered on one knuckle. At every step you miss, my right ear scraped a buckle. You beat time on my head with the palm caked hard by dirt, then waltzed me off to bed still clinging to your shirt. And now listening to Grown Ups Quarreling by Ruth Whitman. Standing in the hall against the wall with my little brother, blown like leaves against the wall by their voices, my head like a ping pong ball between the paddles of their anger, I knew what it meant to tremble like a leaf. Cold with their wrath, I heard the claws of rain pounce. Floods poured throughout the city. Skies clapped over me and I was shaken, shaken like a mouse between their jaws. All right, let's go ahead and vote between those two powerful poems. All right, we've got Because I Could Not Stop for Death, which is another one of my favorite poems. And Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. I want for you to read these poems quietly to yourself reading them, taking a note about their cadence, about the words that rhyme, uh, the rhythm that you're noticing in the poems. I go ahead and press pause on this video and do your reading. And then now that you're back, I want for you to vote between the two poems. Which one was your favorite? 
We've got two poems on matchup number 20, The Wind by Robert Louis Stevenson and Who Has Seen the Wind by Christina Rossetti. I want you to try something with this one. I want for you to try to read along with me at the same time, kind of practicing the way that I read the poem. I saw you toss the kites on high and blow the birds around the sky. And all around I heard you pass like ladies skirts across the grass. Oh wind, a blowing all day long. Oh wind that sings so loud a song. All right, you go ahead and read this stanza. Now let's read this last stanza together. Oh you that were so strong and cold. Oh blower, are you young or old? Are you a beast of field and tree or just a stronger child than me? O oh, wind a blowing all day long. O oh, wind that sings so loud a song. All right, now let's read this one together. Who has seen the wind? Who has seen the wind? Neither I nor you, but when the leaves hang trembling, the wind is passing through. Who has seen the wind? Neither you nor I, but when the trees bow down their heads, the wind is passing by. All right, pick your favorite. Go ahead and vote. All right, we've got two love poems for you to read for matchup number 21. I'm gonna have you read these poems to yourself for matchup 21. I encourage you to read them out loud. Um, so just take a few moments to go ahead and read them um, and then press on pause when you're ready to come back. All right, now that you're done reading those poems, go ahead and go um, to our form and let's vote for which one we think was the best. All right, we're on matchup number 22. We've got my shadow versus shadow wash. My shadow, I have a little shadow that goes in and out with me and what can be the use of him is more than I can see. He is very, very like me from the heels up to the head and I, and I see him jump before me when I jump into my bed. The funniest thing about him is the way he likes to grow. Not at all like proper children, which is always very slow. For he sometimes shoot up taller than an India rubber ball. And he sometimes gets so little that there's none of him at all. He hasn't got a notion of how children ought to play. And he can only make a fool of me in every sort of way. He stays so close to me. He's a coward, you can see. I think shame to stick to nursey as that shadow sticks to me. One morning, very early before the sun was up, I rose and found the shining dew on every buttercup. But my lazy little shadow, like an errant sleepy head, has stayed at home behind me and was fast asleep in bed. And now shadow washed by Shel Silverstein. I've never washed my shadow out in all the time I've had it. I was absolute, it was absolutely filthy, I suppose. And so today I peeled it off the wall where it was leaning and stuck it into the wash tub with the clothes. I put in soap and bleach and stuff and let it soak for hours. I wrung it out and hung it out to drive. And whoever would have thunk that it would have gone and shrunk for now it's so much littler than I. All right, let's take a second and let's vote between those two poems about shadows. All right, we've got two poems here, Mr. Nobody by Anonymous and one art by Elizabeth Bishop. And I want for you to take a little time to read each one of these poems on your own. And then when you're done, go ahead and vote. So go ahead and press pause now, read the poems and then vote. All right, we're at matchup 24. We've got sisters by Lucille Clifton and the sisters by Rainier Ma Maria Rilke. Um, so what I want for you to do for this one is I'm gonna read sisters and then I want for you to read these sisters out loud. Me and you be sisters, we be the same. Me and you coming from the same place. Me and you be greasing our legs, touching up on our edges. Me and you be scared of rats, be stepping on roaches. Me and you come running high down Purdy Street one time and mama laugh and shake her head at me and you. Me and you got babies, got 35, got black. Let our hair go back, be loving ourselves, be loving ourselves, be sisters. 
Only when you sing, I poet. All right, sorry for that. And now I want for you guys to read the sisters out loud. And after you're done reading the sisters out loud, I want for you, you guessed it, to go and vote between your favorites there. All right, matchup number 25 has We Wear the Mask by Paul Lawrence Dunbar and Richard Corey by Edmund Arlington Robertson. We wear the mask. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile. With torn and bleeding hearts, we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be overwise and counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile, but O oh great Christ, our cries to thee from tortured souls arise. We sing. But oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile. But let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. Versus Richard Corey. Whenever Richard Corey went downtown, the people on the pavement looked at him. He was a gentleman from sole to crown, clean favored, imperially slim. And he was always quietly arrayed, and he was always human when he talked, but still he fluttered pulses when he said, good morning, and he glittered when he walked. And he was rich, yes, richer than a king, and admirably schooled in every grace, and fine, we thought he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place. And so on we worked and raided for the night, and went without the meat and cursed the bread, and Richard Corey, one calm summer night, went home and put a bullet through his head. All right, so take a second, think about those two heavy poems and then you guessed it, go, go and vote. All right, we've got matchup number 26. There is no frigate like a book and I opened a book. I want for you to read both of these out loud and then when you're done reading them out loud, I want for you to go ahead and vote. So go ahead and press pause, read these poems to yourself out loud, and then vote. Welcome back to number 27. We've got A Day by Emily Dickinson and The Sun Rising by John Donne. Um, I'm going to read A Day by Emily Dickinson, and then I'm going to have you guys read The Sun Rising by John Donne. I'll tell you how the sun rose, a ribbon at a time, the steeples swarm in amethyst, the news like squirrels ran, the hills untied their bonnets, the bobolinks begun, and then I softly said to myself, that must have been the sun, but how he set, I know not, there seemed a purple style, with which yellow boys and girls were climbing all the while, till when they reached the other side, a dominie in gray, put gently up the evening bars and led the flock away. All right, so after that, I want you to read the sun rising to yourself. Go ahead and press pause on this video. And then when you come back, you're gonna go ahead and vote. All right, we're up to match up 28. We've got one poem by E.E. E. Cummings and the other poem by Pablo Neruda. I carry your heart with me, I carry it in. I carry your heart with me, I carry it in my heart. I am never without it anywhere you go, my dear. And whatever is done is only me as you're doing, my darling. I fear no fate for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world for beautiful, you are my world, my true. And it is you are whatever a moon has always meant and whatever a sun will always sing is you. Here is the deepest secret nobody knows. Here is the root of the root and the bud of the bud and the sky of the sky of a tree called life, which grows higher than the soul can hope or mind can hide. And this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. Versus a hundred love sonnets. I don't love you as if you're a rose of salt, topaz, or arrow of carnations that propagate fire. I love you as one loves certain obscure things secretly between the shadow and the soul. I love you as the plant that doesn't bloom but carries the light of these flowers hidden within itself. And thanks to your love, the tight aroma that rose from the earth lives dimly in my body. I love you without knowing how 
or when or from where. I love you directly without problems or pride. I love you like this because I don't know any other way to love, except it is this form in which I am not, nor are you. So close is that your hand upon my chest is mine. So close that your eyes close with my dreams. Two beautiful poems. All right, let's go ahead and vote. Which one did you like better? All right, we've got three poems left. We've got Hanging Fire by Audre Lorde and A Dandelion for My Mother. And I want for you to press pause on this video and read these two poems to yourself. And then after you're done uh, reading, I want you to make that hard choice and vote between the two. All right, we've got matchup number 30, Hard Choices by Jojo Mansell and The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. I'm gonna read Hard Choices to you and then I want for you to read The Road Not Taken to yourself. A path is laid out ahead, it forks before your feet, a decision filled with dread, uncertain of what you'll meet, a game full of chance, of many hidden pitfalls. To find true romance, dare you risk losing all? Choices never easy to make, fog seems to cloud your way. You fear making a mistake of gambling and losing the day. But life is, hard of hard, is full of hard choices and risk is part of the game. Be brave, ignore doubting voices, make the choice. Life won't be the same. All right, now go ahead and read The Road Not Taken to Yourself and then press pause. And when you're done, go ahead and go to that voting screen and vote for me. All right, we've got two poems, match up number 31. I'm gonna have you read each one of these to yourself and press pause on our video and then come back and I want for you to go ahead and vote. All right, it's our last matchup, matchup number 32. We have gone through 64 total poems today and whittled them down to 32. And from that 32, we'll end up whittling down to 16 and then a sweet 16. And then we're gonna to get to the the elite eight after that, um, and so on and so forth. So we've got two poems that I want for you to listen to, and I want for you to try for this last uh, set of poems that you're going to close your eyes and you're going to listen as I read. The Rose That Grew From Concrete by Tupac Shakur. Did you hear about the rose that grew from a crack in the concrete? Proving nature's law is wrong, it learned to walk without having feet. Funny it seems, but by keeping its dreams, it learned to breathe fresh air. Long live the rose that grew from concrete when no one else ever cared. Success by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. We have not wings, we cannot soar, but we have feet to scale and climb by slow degrees, by more and more the cloudy summits of our time. The mighty pyramids of snow, of stone that wedge like cleave the desert airs when never seen and better known are but gigantic flights of stairs. The distant mountains that uprear their solid bastions of the skies are crossed by pathways that appear as we to higher levels rise. The heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. All right, go ahead and vote on that last set, and then we'll see where we're at after that. Thank you so much for your time today and for participating with our uh, March Madness Poetry Brackets.